In the new carbon economy, accurately measuring emissions will provide crucial data for managing and forward planning for any kind of business. Now, like it or not, the livestock industries are no exception, and many are already taking steps to assess their carbon footprint. At a field day at Lansdowne Research Station just west of Townsville, producers had a chance to look at a number of research projects focusing on the emissions of the cattle grazing industry and the latest measuring methods being developed. An animal hardly tucking into nutritious feed is a welcome sight, particularly for people in northern Australia where land that has very limited agricultural options is well suited to grazing cattle to produce a high quality product. A byproduct of that system is methane, not really what you want to be producing, but strategies to reduce methane emissions are in the pipeline. Himalay is coordinating a major research program on behalf of the federal government reducing emissions in the livestock research program. And we're doing that with a number of other partners from the Australian wool industry, Dairy Australia, uh, along with um, a range of research organisations right across Australia. The four-year program has over 30 projects currently underway and is worth $28 million, the majority of which has come from the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry. We're looking at the genetics of selection for methane in livestock, both cattle and sheep. Uh, we're looking at uh, selection of new plants that uh, may produce less methane in production systems. Uh, we're looking at the whole biology of bacteria in, inside the rumen of cattle and sheep in terms of what is going on there. But you'd have to say overall that this is a very young area of research and, and we still have a long way to go. The first step is to ensure we have accurate measurements of just how much methane cattle are producing. At a recent field day at Lansdowne near Townsville, the latest measuring techniques were on display. This enclosed perspex chamber accurately measures how much methane is produced by cattle in a 24-hour period. Useful data, but not quite mimicking conditions in the paddock. An alternative is this polytunnel housing used to create a more natural environment. In the paddock, infrared and laser beam technology is being employed to measure the concentration of methane above the cattle. We're measuring emissions from a whole range of different ecosystems, different agricultural systems, and to try and get an idea of how those emissions change. If you change practices on, on farm, how does that change the emissions? There are also studies using GPS collars to ascertain how an animal's forage habits relate to their growth rate compared to others in the herd. While Sandra Eady's research identifies the sources of greenhouse gas emissions on different beef properties across disparate areas, Sandra's examined how a property's carbon footprint is affected by savanna burning and how the footprint of a finished steer enterprise compares to a weaner operation. If you can get your weaning percentages up, that reduces the carbon footprint of the beef that you're producing because you've got those cows working that much harder and actually producing something more often. And so you're, you're spreading that cost um, over, over more product coming off the property. If you can manage your fires to shift them from, from late season burning to early season burning to get that emissions down, that's something that, that is, is, is people can tackle immediately. As more advanced techniques have led to more accurate measurements, researchers have noticed something interesting. Our data suggests that the emissions from the northern herd are about 30% lower than the previous estimates were. 30% reduction in methane from cattle in northern Australia is huge in terms of that will flow right through into the national greenhouse gas inventory and help people perceive the impact of the livestock industries in Australia. This good news was just one of the messages producers took home from the field day. Some of the things that we need to do to reduce methane emissions may not necessarily uh, be anti-productivity and may not be anti-profit, so th that's encouraging. And if you can cut the methane, methane emissions from your cattle and turn that into production, there's got to be a benefit. Collecting an accurate picture of how much methane Australian cattle produce is the first step towards identifying some practical strategies producers can use to reduce their environmental impact. Results from research into genetics, food additives, diet and manipulation of bugs in the digestive system will likely provide further strategies down the track. But what can producers do right now to reduce their carbon footprint?
anything they can do to improve productivity, which is what they want to do anyway, because that's their bottom line. And anything they do to do that will have a beneficial effect on methane emissions. While the prospect of a carbon market presents new challenges for producers, MLA are committed to finding solutions to ensure a vibrant, viable future for Australia's livestock industry. I think the key is, uh, it's how you can sustain that rural uh, enterprise, keep the kids going to school and make money in doing it, and also be able to look after the environment at the same time, because who has more vested interest in the environment than the people that are working in it?